Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and today we're going to be talking about the best UI mods for Civ 6. None of the mods I'll be talking about today affect gameplay directly, and they exclusively affect how information in the game is presented to the player. Now, usually I like to play with as few UI mods as possible so people can follow the gameplay really easily on any platform without needing to download UI mods themselves to understand what's going on. A large proportion of the Civ 6 fan base plays on console, which means they don't get access to mods unfortunately. Maybe someday we'd like to see mods on console, hopefully that's something the next generation of consoles or civilization gets figured out. Every mod I mention in this video will have a link to the Steam Workshop in the description of this video, as well as a link to a collection of all the mods at the top if you want them all. The very first mod we are going to talk about is, unsurprisingly enough, a mod that helps you manage your mods called Enhanced Mod Manager. This mod just makes the Mod Manager screen a little bit nicer with more options to sort your mods, as well as telling you which mods are from the workshop or which mods have been manually downloaded. This is very handy to have, but not mandatory. Speaking of mandatory mods, the next four are my personal must-have mods. If you only download these four mods and none of the others, you'll have a much nicer UI with very light changes that will make the game still feel essentially the same. Let's start the list with the Better Report screen and its sub-mod extended policy cards. Better Report screen drastically improves the report screen, letting you see what deals you have active with the AI much easier. You can see here in the current deals screen that I have an ongoing deal with the AI and this just tells me exactly what was exchanged. The unit report screen gives you a helpful overview of your military and civilian units from maintenance cost, experience, you can even promote units from this screen. And then on the civilian side, it allows you to see how many charges your builders have, how much movement they have. I would definitely recommend spending a good few minutes with this mod and kind of going through the screens and seeing what information it gives you and how that could be useful to you. But the most important part of this mod is actually the policy report screen, which can be combined with the extended policy cards mod to show you the exact yields you'll get from a given policy card right in the government window. I have to say, this mod is a game changer. It trivializes the mental math you have to do on whether or not a card is worth it. Some people may feel that Knowing for certain what exactly you get from a card kind of takes away the fuzziness and the game feel of trying to make a good decision with imperfect information. But theoretically, a player could sit there and calculate all that information if they wanted to. So I think a mod that calculates it for them isn't the worst thing ever. I do worry that it means that the best decision is always obvious for whatever the player is trying to achieve, which isn't necessarily the best thing from a game design standpoint. Sometimes you want a little bit of fuzziness and uncertainty in the decisions that players make because it makes the decisions more interesting. Detailed map tax is another mod that I've fallen in love with recently. When you're planning out your empire, it can be a lot of work to try and calculate all the adjacency bonuses of your district by yourself, which is now easy because this mod does it for you. It'll tell you how good that mega city you've planned is, where the best spot for a harbor might be, and will even tell you if a dam, aqueduct, or canal are valid to be placed on the tile you have them pinned on. No longer will your carefully laid plans be destroyed by a game mechanic that you forgot existed. Sucretact Simple UI Adjustments is an amazing mod because it does so much without ever really changing the game. The main features of this mod are being able to hover your mouse over a city to see what tiles they're working. You can also enter into a lovely screenshot mode with an extra button that's located over the minimap and there's expanded and more aesthetically pleasing tooltips for your city yields and most importantly it moves the city shot button to the side of the city banner to make it easier to click on. Now that covers my core must-have mods. Another tip I'll give you is that if you're an aspiring streamer or YouTuber make sure you upscale your UI. I know that like two thirds of my audience watches on non-PC devices, which is why I have my UI scaled up to a stupid size so you can read it no matter what device you're on. Speaking of making things look bigger than they should be, today I want to talk about 
balls, courtesy of this video sponsor, Manscaped.com. Our last video was so successful at trimming back the gamer black forest that my audience cultivates as they play video games at 3 a.m. that Manscaped reached out to me again to do more sponsored integrations. Which brings me to balls, specifically your aforementioned black forest that you've cultivated around your balls that's in dire need of some attention from the Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof trimmer with skin safe technology. Once you've clear cut that black forest, you'll want to spruce up by spritzing yourself with the Crop Preserver Ball Toner Spray. And that's right, I made a spruce based tree pun in an ad read. I can't be stopped and I won't be stopped. Now Manscaped are offering both of these products and more in the performance package which is designed to get you the best performance from your package. They've also got the Weed Whacker for clipping back those pesky middle aged nose hairs and my personal favourite the Shears 2.0 Luxury Nail Kit which travels with me everywhere. Speaking as someone who habitually bites their nails and is trying to stop, I can't stress how nice it is to be able to groom my nails and avoid temptation with this travel friendly kit. But now it comes with this beautiful little wallet that fits in my pocket. Now if you go all out and buy the whole performance package from manscaped.com with the promo code POTATO20, you'll also get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Click the link in the description below, treat yourself to the performance package and make sure you use the promo code POTATO20 at checkout to get your two free gifts and free shipping. Now back to the video. In no particular order, we're gonna go over the other UI mods that I recommend you check out. First up is more lenses, and it comes with a variety of nice new lenses you might find useful, such as the Scout lens that highlights tribal villages so you'll never walk past one of those again, although I'm not sure how useful that would have been in my tribal village on every tile game. Regardless, the lens will automatically activate to highlight goody huts when you select a Scout, but you can change that behavior by clicking on the Options button in the Lens menu, which also lets you disable the Builder lens, which I personally find a little bit annoying, so I turned that off. I can see how the Builder Lens would be useful, I'm just not a huge fan of it. I don't really like my UI to change drastically during gameplay, so that's also why I don't really like religious units, because when you click on them the whole screen changes, and that kind of bothers me. So that's why I turn off the auto builder lens in the options menu. There is also a resource lens that lets you highlight bonus strategic and luxury resources and you can even specifically look for one resource in particular with filters which is a little bit easier to use than the built in game search function so I can see this becoming a staple lens of my future gameplay. And most importantly, for those of you who struggle with making national parks, there is even a naturalist lens that will highlight valid places for them, as well as an incredibly useful city overlap lens, which you can use to plan out your AOE buffs from things like factories and zoos and the Colosseum, since it highlights the tiles that can reach the most cities in your empire by a particular range, which the player can customize, say for example, if you get a great person or a city state to buff the range of your buildings. The settler lens also gets some new functionality, whereas if you hold down the control button, it will highlight resources within three tiles of your cursor, which is helpful for planning out your cities to see which tiles they'll actually claim. There are a bunch more lenses with this mod, but I think that's shown how good the mod can be. Let's move on to the next one. This one is a quick, easy, in and out mod called Better Builder Charges Tracking. All it does is make builders have their number of charges written on their unit icon as if they were unit promotions. Handy and much easier to tell how many charges you have without having to click on them or to inspect their unit model because yes, if you didn't know, the number of builders in the group is how many charges they have. In the same vein, we have better espionage screen and better trade screen. Both significantly improve their respective menus to be more accessible and have more information. Better trade screen makes filtering your trade routes easier and allows you to quickly identify which trade routes will be the best to achieve your current goals. You can sort the trade screen by destination and the mod will tell you which starting city has the highest yields for that destination. It'll also tell you if you have the Tourism Trading Boost active, which I find incredibly nice because I don't have to go and check the Culture Victory screen and go down the list to see if I have open borders and trade routes with everyone by hovering over a tooltip. 
It'll also show you if you have a trading post at a glance. Better espionage screen lets you filter spy destinations by district type. So if you have a particular mission you'd like to pull off, like for example, siphon funds, you can filter the list by commercial hub and then simply look for the city with the highest gold payout. It also makes the espionage screen more information dense, but whoever really clicks on that anyway. Great Works Viewer fixes up the Great Works screen by sorting it based on slot type instead of by city. So all of your Great Works of writing slots are all together, as are your music and so on. It also makes the screen bigger, allows you to filter by Great Work type, and it can help you with theming your museums by assigning a block color to Great Works from the same artist. Real Governor Inspector is extremely useful as it lets you see at a glance what sort of effect your governor will have by stationing them in a particular city. Very helpful for picking where to send Pingala, for example, to maximize your science and culture, or Liang if you're trying to optimize the coastal city or one that benefits greatly from waterworks, for example. These last few mods are more fun UI mods than they are really useful. And mostly they just make the game nicer to look at in some way. However, one of them in particular has an incredible use case for great people that I love very much and will probably be permanently installed on my Civ 6 game. The first mod is Sucretact's Global Relations Panel. I like this one a lot because it doesn't have much practical use outside of simply presenting information in a really pleasing way. It's fun to check in on a domination game and see that everyone hates you. Or if you're in a diplomatic game, see all the friendly tendrils of alliances and emissaries emanating from your civilization. Next, we have the Real Great People mod that adds custom pictures for each great person in the game, as well as sprucing up the Great People screen a little bit more as well. Most importantly, this has the incredible ability to filter previously recruited great people in the game so you can pinpoint exactly how badly you got shafted by being skipped over for great people on the turn rollover. Colorized Historic Moments is purely for fun and entirely cosmetic, and it just adds a nice splash of flair to those historic moment pop-ups. I go back and forth on whether I want to use this one a lot, which means it's probably a good mod. Sometimes I like the original grayscale, well, brown scale, of the historic moments, but every now and again, like a middle-aged man past his prime, I squeeze myself into a salmon shirt in the hopes that a splash of colour will brighten up my life and outlook before retiring to the colour schemes that I'm most familiar and comfortable with. And that's it. Those are all of the UI mods I would personally consider using or would recommend to another player. Did I miss out on any that you really like? Drop a comment with the name of the mod down below, and if there's enough demand, I'll do a follow-up video for the most suggested ones. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!